Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Objective-C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight, we're going to be covering Chapter 8, Programming Basics in Objective-C. For those of you that are attending live, if you can raise your hand, if you can hear my voice and see my screen, that way I can make sure I have everything configured correctly. All right. And of course, this is being recorded for later playback on YouTube. Um, for those of you that are watching on YouTube or would like to know where those videos are, just go to excelme.com and click in the free go to webinar control panel. I'm sorry, the free video um, um, link on the page, and it has the uh, sessions that are coming up as well as the old um, recordings that are available on YouTube. And if you'd like to attend live, click on the YouTube channel. Um, you'll be able to subscribe and get automatically notified when I upload new videos and also register for the live um, videos, uh, the live feeds. And then of course if you'd like to take one of the classes that go in more in depth on all these topics for iOS development, which by the way changed today with the new iOS uh, is out um, and um, a new version of Xcode just came out today. We talked about it earlier in the class. Um, so very exciting along with the new iPad it's actually not called the iPad 3 or the iPad HD. It's called the new iPad. <laughs> so anyway, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about um, collections. Collections are containers. You'll hear the name used um, um, both ways. And we're going to ta talk and look at the three basic ones, NS set, NS array, NS dictionary. NS string could also be called a container. It holds a string of characters and, or a container of characters. Um, Anyway, and uh, again, this is going to be talking a little bit more about in Chapter 8 in the book. I'm just going to cover it here in about 10 uh, minutes or less. That's what it allows me on YouTube. And so I've made a little program here. It is called um, Containers. I'll post it here on Chapter 8 in the, um, it will be on my forum under forum.xlme.com under Chapter 8 of where the book is. I'll go ahead and post this project. But here I have the three basic, um, or two out of three, we're get, we have time to cover tonight. I talked about NS Dictionary in another YouTube video, but I'm going to use sets and arrays tonight. And a set is basically a set of unordered objects, any objects that you want. And so I have a set here that I am um, initializing. I'm using the set with objects class method. That's a factory method that gives me an allocated set of my three um, objects. In this case, they're strings. Um, they are, um, uh, this is um, initialized and allocated for me. Again, it's a class method. It's important always when you initialize your set um, to use nil to end it, otherwise you'll get a compiler error or a compiler crash. And you'll notice that it is a non-mutable class. Difference between mutable NS set and NS mutable set is that with a non mutable class like this one is, me, that means that you can't change it after you've already assigned it. So you cannot add new items to a set, a dictionary, a string, an array if it is not mutable. So only if it was a mutable one that started like this can you change it later on. And obviously, you'd want to do the same thing right here, too. All right, very important. Um, you cannot change a non mutable uh, class object after you have um, set it. Okay, can't do it. All right, so here I have a little loop. This loop goes through and prints out. Um, uh, my um, my objects that are inside of my set. Okay, and um, Next, I go ahead and I set up a mutable set. This is called my set, um, my M set, as opposed to my set here. This is a mutable one here. So I've done the allocation. I caught, could have set used um, a knit with um, with objects and done this right here, and then added objects later on to it. Okay, I could have I could have done that. So with a mutable uh, a, a mutable class, you can go ahead and, and add things, remove things, delete things later on. 
That's that's the advantage of it. You can't do that. Very, I keep I keep saying that and emphasizing it, but a lot of new developers have issues. They don't remember the same with strings. Once you assign an NS string, you cannot change it. You cannot change that variable. You have to use NS mutable string if you want to change variables. All right, so here I have um, a uh, an object. I'm going to go ahead and add four, uh, well actually three objects to it. Uh, the string four, five, six, and then I'm going to print it out, and then I'm going to remove all the objects. And I could add more objects later on to it because it's mutable. I have that type of flexibility with it. All right, and as I'm kind of doing right here, I'm going to go ahead and add zero to it and print it out again, remove it again. So I'm adding, removing, adding, removing, deleting. Um, we have that flexibility. Okay, NS array, very similar here. We're going to go ahead and um, call the non mutable class NS array. We're going to go ahead and assign three items in our array. Now, the difference between an array and a set and a dictionary is arrays are indexed. They are ordered objects. They go in the way you put them in. So this is there and they are indexed ordered at, with a zero index. So the first item in the array is at zero. The second item is at one. The third item is at two. Index two, index three. So zero index, very important. So if I want the first item in the array, I use object at index. Now in other programming languages, we have this type of syntax. We, we, we could do something like this. If we were doing C, C++, uh, Java, it would look something like this, perhaps, okay? That is not, that's not how we access arrays. We call methods to access the arrays. We don't have this type of syntax available to us in, um, in arrays. So we're doing object add index. I'm adding it. And then I'm going to go ahead and make um, a mutable array. And I'm going to go ahead and add objects to that. I'm going to go ahead and print out my first array and then print out my second array. And I have a dictionary down here added as well. Just we're not going to have time to cover that tonight. But I'll go ahead and run it, uh, my application. And I print out my objects to the council, my strings to the council. So uh, pretty straightforward. The four, three or four basic containers that your applications will probably have. You'll have at least a string, an array. Uh, arrays are almost um, required in iPhone development, the way that we handle tables and that. Um, so your chances are you're always going to use arrays, you'll always use strings in your applications, you just can't get away from it. Um, dictionaries are the coolest, I think, because they're so fast in looking up items, and that's one of the advantages to dictionaries. When you need to look up something, um, so you know the you know the key, just like you use a dictionary on the book, uh, on your bookshelf to look up a term, you know the key, the word you want to find, and it returns the value very quickly for you, so, and holds a lot. So that's the nice thing about a dictionary. And here's the non-mutable type, and of course, NS mutable dictionary for our mutable or changeable types. So for those of you that are attending live, I'm going to go ahead and stop the YouTube recording here. For those of you that are uh, attending live, for those of you that are on the YouTube um, channel watching this, feel free to visit my website and subscribe and also attend classes in the future. Those that are free are under the free tab. Just click on that. You can see what's coming up. Those of you that are attending my class or like to clean my, my um, my in-depth classes on iOS and game programming. Just click on the schedule. The classes are both live and recorded. There's eight uh, classes per course. And so there's about eight to 10 hours of instruction per course. So we cover a lot of information. And it's always updated. You get access for as many times as, uh, as you like. I never take away access to a course. You can take it as often as you like, both live and recorded. Thanks for attending, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and take questions for those that are attending um, live. Good night.